Welcome to the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation's Virtual CF Education Day, a webcast hosted by the CF Foundation and supported through an unrestricted educational grant by Genentech. I'm Leslie Hazel, Director of Patient Resources at the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation. We are going to be talking about airway clearance, or ACT, that people with CF can use to help keep their lungs healthy. Mary Lester is a respiratory therapist at the Medical University of South Carolina, and joining her is Alex Faircloth and or her father, Delane. Alex is 11 years old and has cystic fibrosis. They will be talking about airway clearance techniques and demonstrating how you can use these techniques to live a healthy and full life. Please remember, there are different ways to do airway clearance, and you will see which ones that Alex uses in her life but please work with your CF care center to find the techniques that work for you or your child. What is most important is that airway clearance is done on a routine basis to help keep your lungs healthy. Welcome Mary, Alex, and Delane. Thank you, Thank Leslie. You. Hey, we're gonna talk about the airway clearance therapies that you've been taught throughout your life, mm -hmm. okay? We're gonna demonstrate some of those, all right? Mm -hmm. Okay, good, let's start with the first <coughs> therapy that patients are taught once they're diagnosed, and it's the original airway clearance therapy, percussion and postural drainage, or CPT, chest physiotherapy, cupping and clapping it's called, and we all have our certain names <laughs> for it. And what, what the therapy involves is the caregiver cups and claps on the patient's chest to loosen the mucus, and when you cup your hand, it sounds like this. It creates a little vacuum, so as you do that on the lung, that vacuum helps pull the mucus off the walls of the airway so it can be loosened up and you can cough the mucus up. And, and another uh, part of that technique is draining the lungs by, by sitting in certain positions. When you sit up, we drain the upper lobes of your lungs, and as we lay you down, we drain the lower lobes. Do you get CPT treatments at home? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, tell me about that. When when do you get the treatments? Um, I usually get them right before I go to bed. Um, I can't do them every single night, but I try to get as much as I can out of it. All right, good. And who gives you the treatments? My dad. <laughs> he's, a, he's good at that. I bet, I bet. Well, that's the first therapy we teach patients when they're, in, when they're initially diagnosed. <clears throat> and we encourage it to be done twice a day, no matter what, because we want the child, the baby, to get used to those therapies because you're going to have to do them for the rest of your life. So <coughs> even when the child's not symptomatic, you know, there's no coughing, they look perfectly healthy, we just, we really encourage the parents to get two treatments in a day so we can get the children used to it. So, th so then when they do get sick, it's not, you know, new to them. They know that this is what they need to do. Okay? Now do you, you give her the beatings at home? Is that what you call them? Um, yes, ma'am. Uh, <laughs> Alex was diagnosed when she was 18 months old, and um, that's the first thing we learned as well. And we call them beatings. Um, <coughs> we've said that before to people, and uh, they're like, beatings? But that's what we call it. Uh, when we first started with her, you know, she was nice, tiny, and small, which yeah. now she's long, so it's a little bit different as far as sitting in my lap. But um, when we first started with her when she was 18 months, we were, at the time, you know, taught to put her feet above her head. That way it would drain that way. And um, we've been doing it a long time. And uh, it's a little bit of a, uh, every night we get to spend a little bit of time together doing it. Mm -hmm. And um, sometimes she'll fall asleep, sometimes we'll watch TV, but uh, we've been doing it for a good while now. That's nice, that's nice that you make it a fun <coughs> thing for both of you, some time to spend together. I'm glad you brought up the point about the head down, head tilt down technique. That's how, that's how we used to teach mm -hmm. it years ago, just to put the head down so the mucus would drain out, but we found that with babies and, and children under 10, there was a higher incidence of reflux. So now we put the baby flat and, and do the chest therapy, kind of turning and getting all the segments of the lung just in the flat position to drain the lower lobes of the lung. So we don't do that <coughs> head down position any longer. And then Alex, as you got older and more independent, we showed you the vest in clinic years ago. How old were you when we did I was did four that? years old. Four years old. Yeah, we usually start talking to parents about the vest when they're around two years old. They, the toddlers are real active and the parents are having trouble, you know, 
getting their therapies in because they can't keep them still. Mm -hmm. So they always question me about the vest. So that's when we start our discussions and, and things like that. So let's put your vest on and do a little demonstration of it. And the vest is an air pulse generator. It's a giant air compressor. And there's only two settings to it. We set the hertz or the vibration that it produces and then the pressure, how much pressure the vest fills up. So as you'll see, the vest will fill up with pressure and then the vibration will start to shake. And that vibration causes some shearing forces in the lungs that loosen the mucus off the walls of the airway so the patient can cough them up. So Mary, is this as effective as the pounding or the beatings? Well, it's, you know, the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation's Pulmonary Guidelines Committee looked at that. They looked at all the therapies, airway clearance therapies that we tell patients to do, and they compared, the, the studies compared CPT, the chest therapy to the vest, acapella to CPT. They compared all the different methods, and they found that no one therapy stood out as being better than another. They did find out that <coughs> any one of them is better than nothing. So, you know, we, we really want, that's why you work with your care team to try to find that therapy that works best for you at, at this point in your life. So I could do my best in the morning and my beatings at night? Yeah, that's a, I think that's a good plan. Yep. Mary, for us, um, Alex is busy. I mean, our, our, our lives are busy. She's got a you know, school, softball, piano, church, <laughs> it's really busy. And then the vest has really worked well for us. In the morning time, you know, we walk into her bedroom before she ever gets out of bed. And we'll raise her up and hook her up. And uh, the good part about that is she can do her nebulizers at the same time, which, you know, saves a lot of time. It's killing two birds with one stone. And uh, we, when she gets done with that, it's brush her teeth, you know, and off to school. So uh, the vest has been a, a really a blessing for us. That saves you time and gets those therapies in in the morning. Oh, yeah. That's great. It saves a lot of time. That's a lot of times she doesn't even wake up. She's still asleep when she's doing it. So it, it uh... I don't even realize it's only. You're so used to it, huh? <laughs> so used to it. Now that's the new vest we sized you for in clinic. And yes, it's doing okay. Yes, ma'am. And then last time you came to clinic, we changed the settings on your vest too. Are those working for you? Yes, ma'am. Um, we usually change them around every five minutes. Okay. And do different settings of it. All right, good. Try to get some coughing in between too. And All as right. you can tell, the uh, it makes her talk funny and. Uh, <laughs> Sometimes her friends would come over and want to put the vest on just so they can see her talk and sing. So that's just a little bit of an entertainment value, too. Ah, that's great. That's great. All right, let's move on to the next. Let's do some um, active cycle breathing techniques. Okay. These are breathing techniques that we teach for when, you know, the vest isn't available or someone isn't available to do CPT. You can do these breathing techniques to help move the mucus. And active cycle breathing starts with breathing control, just relax breathing, and then you do a chest expansion or a deep breath and a hold, let that out gently, and then at the end we'll follow it with some huff coughing. Okay. And I know you use this therapy yes, a lot, don't you? Yeah, um, when I go back and forth the ball games and stuff, I get it in as much as possible. Okay, good, good. Well, let's just do a quick cycle of it. Let's do relaxed breathing. It's breathing in through your nose and out through your mouth. Good, air in, air out, there you go. Now let's do a thoracic expansion, a deep breath and hold. Hold it, three seconds, now let it out. But then we'll just, we'll do a few cycles of that, and then we follow it with some huff coughing. Why don't you show us how you do your huff coughing? Mary, this is called fogging up the mirror. This is what we call it. Um, we pretend that she's in front of the mirror and you're you're blowing air onto the mirror to fog it up. Right, and that's exactly what it is. It's a forced expiratory technique. You're forcing the air out with your mouth open, and that forcing of the air helps loosen the mucus so you can cough it up. It's a, more, it's a gentler way to cough. So that's good. All right, that's good. So you use the huff a lot. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. that's your, you, you've told me that before, that that's really your yeah, that's most like, effective form of airway it, clearance. It just helps me, like, with anything. It's like my best technique with it. Yeah. You know, like I said, we got a busy, busy lifestyle. Alex is really busy, and, and there's some <coughs> nights when we just, you know, get home at 8 o'clock or 8.30, and it's time we eat, and it's time for her to go to bed. So there's some nights that we can't do her beatings, and um, 
always try to get that in. Always try to get a little bit of something in. All right, good. Well, you know, it's it's a good form of airway, cl airway clearance techniques, and it can take the place of the vest or a beading at night. But, you know, you have to do enough cycles of it to, so it lasts about 20 minutes. So it's a good, effective form of airway clearance. Okay, now let's get into the acapella here. Or what do you call this? <laughs> the pickle. The pickle. The green pickle. The pickle, or the acapella, is just a handheld uh, device that patients exhale into. And when they exhale into it, there is a resistor on the bottom, and it, it dials in PEP, or positive expiratory pressure. That positive pressure, pressure as they exhale stints the airways open a little bit longer. And also while they're exhaling, there's a stick with a magnet about the size of my fingernail. And on exhalation, that stick vibrates, and that causes uh, <coughs> the loosening of the mucus. So let's do a demonstration here. One, two, three, exhale. All right, good. Here, let's, let's dial in. Let me dial this resistor. <coughs> and your uh, care provider will dial in the resistance on the bottom of the acapella. And the way we do that, if we, we just listen for the exhalation. We want a good three to four second exhalation. It's not something you change at home. You have your, you know, when you come to clinic, we'll change it. And we have you demonstrate it for us. One, two, three, exhale. All right, good. <coughs> and as you can see, it does its job. <laughs> Very good. Yeah, we want to do about 10 cycles of the pickle and then try to cough at the end. Try to hold your coughing if you can. I know you can't today, <laughs> but, you know, try to just, pro, you know, do the cycles and do that coughing at the end. And we like you to go through enough cycles of the, of the 10 breaths to get a good 20 minute treatment in, okay? And then how about for, aren't you going to <coughs> summer camp? Yes ma'am. Yeah, what are you planning on doing for airway clearance? Um, I'm gonna bring my pickle and I'm gonna do my breathing techniques and maybe some of my friends can do my beatings for me and good. I'm gonna she's, try to. She's got a couple of friends from church and over the past few years, they've kind of learned how to do her beatings for us. So, um, that kind of that kind of helps out having friends like that that will help her out. Yeah, I try to do it at least twice a day, if you know. Oh, that's good. And plus, the blow in the mirror. Yeah, yeah, get your huff coughing mm -hmm. in too. That's good. And you've told me before. Sometimes when you, you can feel certain areas mm -hmm. where the secretions are stuck, right? You feel like you're plugged. You've told me. Mm -hmm. and that's a good. You know, once you feel it, that's a good spot right. to have right. them beat yeah. on you to help loosen it up. The past couple of years, she has really gotten to the point where she can feel it, you know, and she'll say, Daddy, I'm, I'm clogged right here, and uh, we'll do a few beatings on her, and sure yeah. enough, something's going to come up. Yeah. I'm going to do the so huff, she... cough, and beatings, and it'll that's, come right up. That's great. Like... That's what's good about those breathing techniques. Mm -hmm. You can do them yep. in conjunction with a chest ther therapy session. All right, that's great. Well, I want to ask that we're getting close to our end. Um, do you have any other questions or any other information you want to make sure the people who are watching know? Yes, ma'am. I got, got one question. Uh, Alex will be in the sixth grade next year, Mary. And um, believe it or not, she's thinking about joining the band and playing the clarinet. Mm -hmm. So does that count as a form of a breathing technique? <laughs> well, it is a breathing technique. You know, it's uh, a wind instrument, you know, does produce some positive expiratory pressure as you're playing it and it you know has a little vibration with it too mm -hmm. so it, it does it's a good addition to your airway clearance routine it's much like exercise exercise is a great thing to incorporate into your lifestyle right. but we still like to get the two airway clearance therapy sessions in a day so she can't say daddy I'm uh, I'm practicing <coughs> a long time because this is a technique I can tell her to quit practicing right <laughs> um, and, and lastly miss Mary um, as I expect, she gets a little older, more independent. You know, I'm a little concerned that, that she may slack off on her, on her breathing techniques. You know, what are some ways for me to, you know, encourage her to keep up with it as she gets older, more independent? Okay, that's a great question. And, and we do see that as, you know, kids go off to college. Mm -hmm. You know, we do see sometimes they slack in the therapies a bit. But you've laid a great base for her where you've incorporated these airway clearance into her everyday life and, and it's part of your family and, and you just know it's something you're doing every day. Mm -hmm. So she's got that base. So I think she's going to go do okay with that. Good. Mm -hmm. 
Well, I want to thank you, Mary, Alex, and Delane, for thank demonstrating you. what you do and you know being willing to answer some of the questions that have come up related to airway clearance techniques for people with cystic fibrosis. I also wish to thank you for watching and the Medical University of South Carolina for hosting this segment. I encourage you to partner with your CF Care Center to learn more about the different airway clearance techniques and to find the best method for you or your child. Your care center can help you as you grow or as your child grows and start college, start a career, and start a family to make sure that there's, you find an airway clearance technique that works the best for you. Remember, what is most important is that you find a technique that you can do on a daily basis. Please partner with your CF Care Center to learn more about the hazards and how to avoid secondhand smoke, exercise in <coughs> cystic fibrosis, chronic medications for CF, and the different airway clearance techniques. To learn about CF drug development, lung disease, nutrition, quality improvement, building life skills to manage CF, issues and answers related to insurance and government programs, and how to avoid germs, please watch an archive webcast on our website. Again, I would like to thank you for watching and submitting your questions. All of the presenters and hosting institutions, Rick Vasta and the technical crew, Genentech for their unrestricted educational grant, Sarah Waybright, and the CF Foundation for making this webcast possible. Thank you and good night.